Hello, and welcome to St. Columba's. I look forward to worshiping with you. We welcome a special guest preacher today, Bishop Eugene Sutton, Bishop of the Diocese of Maryland, and one time Associate Rector of St. Columba's. The whole world was gathered at the crucifixion, says Bishop Sutton. Were you there when they crucified our Lord? Will you be there when they crucify our Lord? For this Palm Sunday celebration, our readings lead us into the drama of Jesus' last days, his passion and death. First, let's give ourselves to the music and open our hearts to God's love. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace, Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord, God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks along the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then. He entered Jerusalem and went into the temple, and when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. God be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to our sovereign God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, 
for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival. Or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body before its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who is one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go? And make the preparations for you to eat the Passover. So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, 
and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one after another, Surely not I. Surely not I. Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated, and said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into this time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See? My betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi! And kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. 
A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. And in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah? the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You were also with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish for me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify, Crucify him. him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. 
Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they let him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days? Save yourself. Come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Ah! Eli! Eli! Which means, My God! My God! Why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen! He is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait! Let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Jesus, and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus saw where the body was laid.
Let us pray. Tell us what we need to hear, O oh God. And then show us, show us what we need to do to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. There was a crowd there 2,000 years ago on that hill, and they were all there on that hill where Jesus died. His friends, his enemies, and those who were neither but just hung around to see what all the fuss was all about. The setting for that strange scene was one brushed on the canvas of history, boldly stroked in colors which portrayed the qualities of the participants, some red with anger, others purple with rage, green with envy, yellow with cowardice, blue with loyalty, white with holiness, black with reverence, and then the gray, gray with indecision. Jesus the Christ was dying on a cross, and on the ground were spectators of every kind, enemies, undecideds, distant disciples, close companions, loved ones, even his mother. Yes, there was a crowd there for Jesus' crucifixion, but not many in the crowd were shedding a tear for him. Many in the crowd were openly ridiculing him, their contempt undisguised, and using a customary and unmistakable gesture, those who passed by wagged their heads, spat and hissed, Aha! We've got him! Whether hired by the high priest for a few shekels, or acting of their own volition, and without pay, they came not to serve him, but to insult him, and not to bind up his wounds, but to sprinkle salt in them. And they added to the condemned man's pain. They had reason to believe that they were on the winning side that day, thinking that this strange Galilean in a few minutes would be dead, and in a few hours would be buried, and in a few days would be forgotten. So scornfully they screamed, Ah! We did it. And yet, and yet, an element of cosmic surprise was reserved for both the friends and the foes of Jesus, but the passing of time was required to reveal the nature of that surprise. Stay tuned for next Sunday. For now, we remain at the beginning of Holy Week marking time with our Lord as he spends the last days of his life on his earthly journey and as we go solemnly through the events of this week, including Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and Saturday's Great Vigil. Many worshipers will sadly miss these days and these events mostly because many of you just will not make the time to do so and not bother to tune in to the online services. This is very unfortunate, because, but it's understandable given our fast-paced modern culture, right? Americans are not good at delaying celebrations, are we? We don't like to wait for anything. Let the good times roll. Let the celebrations begin. Isn't that what we've been taught in our instant gratification, pleasure now, pain later society? Let's demand the good grades without performing excellently. Let's dance in the end zone without making the block. Let's own the BMW without being able to make the payments. Let's adore the sweet little baby Jesus in the manger at Christmas, but ignore the Son of Man coming in Advent to right the evils of the world. And let's go straight from the Hosannas of this day, Palm Sunday, to celebrating Easter next Sunday without having to walk with Jesus to the cross 
and our own crosses. Why wait? We want resurrection now and forego the suffering. That's exactly what many of the persons who felt uh, felt who witnessed the events that we commemorate this week. But the passage of time would reveal to them that they were shortchanging themselves. Who were these people anyway? Who was there that momentous week when Jesus was assassinated by the state and the religious world collaborating together? Who was there? Well, they were all there. The soldiers were there, driving nails into limbs, placing thorns on a bloody head, wiping vinegar on parched lips. Their job was to inflict physical pain. And they were just doing their job, you know, as all soldiers must do. They were there. The political leaders were there to witness the demise of yet another man who would be king. We don't have to worry about this one either, they said to themselves as he breathed his last. The gamblers were there, smelling an opportunity to make a buck from a a condemned man's estate. What did he leave? Only a garment? Well, somebody's got to do it. After all, it's just business, you know, just business. It's not personal. They were there. Simon of Cyrene was there. Another foreigner, a man of color, pressed into involuntary servitude. The super-duper religious people were there, those pious ones on whose lips are always glib quotations from scripture, while they persecute, persecute those they think are beneath them and who believe differently from them. They stood there saying, we won alongside the unbelievers. Priests and scoundrels, merchants and beggars, women and men, black, wine, and black, white, and brown people, the young, the old, married people, single, gay people, transgendered people, saints and sinners, they were all there. And the disciples, the 12 disciples, they were not there, not there, physically anyway. They were too afraid to be on Golgotha's hill with Jesus. But they were there in their tortured consciences and their guilt. They tried to escape but couldn't. In their conspicuous absence, Jesus' disciples were there. In fact, the whole world was there at the cross, wasn't it? Every human being was represented at Calvary. And everything that human beings go through, every dashed hope, every unloving act, every senseless act of violence, every disability and disease, every experience of pain and suffering, every reminder that one is at the bottom of the social uh, totem pole in this society, every reason to end living in this crazy world, and every desire to join that condemned man in his agonizing last moments on the ultimate absurdity of the cross, it was all there, all there. And it still is today, today, spring 2021. For the downtrodden souls of this world, for a disproportionate number of black and brown peoples all over the world, and in this country, for the poor, the outcast, the marginalized, and the forgotten, 
they too, just like their Lord, will be crucified this Friday. Crucified on Saturday. Crucified on Sunday. Crucified on Monday. Day by day, nailed on the cross of neglect and bigotry and hatred by a world that turns its back on their pain. They, with Christ, have been placed on a cross and laid in the tomb by systems that do not care about them or for them, and they are still here today. But who will roll away the stone for them? This week, the cross will still draw the world's attention to the fact that humanity tried to kill God's Son in some forsaken corner in the Middle East. The world was there then, and it's still there today. They were all there. But were you there? Were you there when they murdered Jesus? You know that old African-American spiritual, were you there when they crucified my Lord? You know, it's not only a simple but moving tune that places you at the cross with Jesus, but it's also a physiological wonder for what it does to your body when you sing that spiritual. My wife, who is a musician, an Anglican musician, she tells me of musicologists who talk about the genius of that spiritual that has one crying out in a long, soulful moment, oh, Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Notice the sound of oom. The oom sound and tremble, when hummed three times slowly, has the primal effect of going to the depths one's very soul. The oom um sound, when voice, it re repeatedly descends to the deep, hence the widespread use of oom um in meditation, in an ancient and modern chant in a variety of cultures. It's a universal intonation that brings the whole created order into one's own being, first with the lament, oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? What's the meaning of Holy Week for you? What makes you tremble today? Anything? Is the Divine One attempted, attempting to murder the Divine One make you tremble? Does hearing the story of Jesus' crucifixion today make you tremble? What can you find there that's missing from your life here and now? Come and see. Come and see. For, next, for the next several days at St. Columbus Church, you are invited to spend some time with this man, Jesus, as he faced the end of his life. You can have your feet washed, some of you, a few of you, as he lovingly wanted his disciples to do for each other. You can virtually, if not in person, dine with him at the commemoration 
his last supper. And you can watch with him as he whispers his last words on the cross. And as he is laying in a tomb to await the central act of the Christian faith. Come, come and see. Gather again and again to see what's there at Calvary's hill. For even though you and I are here, what we really desire and what this tortured world so desperately needs is there. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Marianne, for all those who join us during this time of worship, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the Church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people, especially for those who suffer during this time of pestilence. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, those in prison, the oppressed, for all those striving to dismantle racism wherever it may be found, and especially for Sheila, Carl Kreps, Arden Rose, Basil Petru, Richard Cole, Sue Womack, Justine Hedgepeth, Campbell McLean, Mary Elcano, Lalita, Colton, Matthew Hartnow, Mary Agazio, John Benink, Rick Dowd, Mary Pat Jones, Yuri Kirdoya, Michael Lusignan, our siblings in the Asian American community, and for those we name now, either silently or aloud. I ask your thanksgiving for Bishop Eugene Sutton for using God's word to energize our faith. The Bach concert last week for the team that Lindy Gallagher put together dramatizing today's gospel, and for those blessings we name now, either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially for Joe Daly, Stephen Wilson, James Laughlin, and those lost in last week's shooting in Atlanta and this week's shooting in Boulder, and for those we name now, either silently or loud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Most holy God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you and also with you. Peace be with you. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, Peace be with you. you.
St. Columba's is a church on a mission to live God's love. We are eager to connect with you and help you take your next step toward life with Christ. I invite you to join us in prayer during this holiest of holy weeks with special offerings on Holy Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And join us via Zoom for Maundy Thursday. Because we'll be sharing the Last Supper together, please set a table at home with bread, wine or juice, and two or more candles. And join us via Zoom for a contemplative Good Friday evening service. And then on Easter, we'll celebrate the resurrection of the risen Christ with brass, music, and alleluias. For details about these services and to learn more about opportunities for prayer, fellowship, and ways to serve others, or to make your gift of thanks, join us at columba.org. My deep thanks to each of you for your generosity in support of the mission and ministry of St. Columba's The world needs the love we share as the body of Christ. May you travel with Jesus this week. May you sit and listen and keep awake in the quietness of the garden. May you walk and pray on the road to Calvary. And may you rise, healed and born to new life with Jesus on the third day. And the blessing of God Almighty most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.